Well, welcome to the Pro Brick exclusive YouTube channel. You're with Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist, New South Wales, Central Coast. I don't pr practice as a minister anymore. Um, I don't think I had the calling of the patients, but I can use the wisdom that I gain to help others in whatever's happening in their lives. Guys, if you haven't already, um, subscribe to the channel, like, comment and share. Um, I'm going to do a talk today on the subject of thorns betray roses. And this has got to do with a person's default. It's when a person goes into a relationship and they start off really well, which is known as limerence. Uh, limerence is the honeymoon stage of the period where the dopamine just keeps getting refueled and rebuilt into the person's mind and heart and holds them in place with the new partner. Um, keeps things uh, elevated, keeps things exciting. But when the limerence wears off, um, things can start to change and things can start to change rapidly, as a matter of fact. And that's not very nice for anybody, particularly um, when you're really trying hard to have a good go at the relationship with the person because Deep down, nobody wants to swap and change. Nobody wants to um, feel like they're half-hearted within a relationship. But what happens is the rose period of the relationship, when things start to blossom and things are really sort of settling in and going good, can often be betrayed by the thorn aspects of the person's character. And it's not necessarily deliberate. It's not necessarily something that the other person wants to happen. Um, you'll get a lot of these people keep turning up to the relationship, but they know there's thorns um, coming out from all sides. Usually it can come in the form of family members. It can come in the form of their own character, um, flaws. It can come in the form of friends. It can, there's all sorts of things that will come. Um, it can come in the form of medicinal um, medicines, drugs, habits, um, and things like this that will come and begin to take the petals off the roses and expose the thorns, and the thorns start pricking into the relationship. Now, what you need to do when this starts to happen is raise the issue, raise the alarm bells. Can we have a look at this? Maybe you should fix this. Can we try and resolve that? The problem is sometimes the issues are so far away from the person being able to resolve them due to a lack of courage, due to a lack of um, maternal relationships, interfamily relationships. People don't want to upset so-and-so or so so-and-so remains as a figure of conflict. And... I guess it all comes down to value at the end of the day, how much the other person wants to get the things out of the way to keep the partner that they have in their lives. And sometimes there's just only a handful of those who will step up and go, nah, this is what I want, this is important to me, and I'm not going to let anybody ruin it. Back to the channel, our scripture for today is Worry weighs a person down, an encouraging word cheers up a person. This is from Proverbs 12, 25. Worry weighs a person down, an encouraging word cheers a person up. Now, let me go into this a little bit. Worry can be the issues that we need to resolve within the relationship that are going to be hard. That causes worry. That causes stress. It can cause oppression. It can bear down on a person. It can cause depression. It can defeat a person. Um, and you can encourage a person in this state. You can be encouraging that person and cheering them up. But it's not going to fix the issue. This is the problem. This is, this is where it gets real complicated, as it were. This is where the thorns can become more powerful than the roses. And... I've always said there's peacemakers and there's keep peacekeepers. Peacekeepers will just keep the peace and not worry too much. Well, not give credence to actually fixing the problem, whereas a peacemaker will come in and 
throw the grenade in and count their losses and hopefully in some way come out with a result. But just peacekeeping um, doesn't always cause resolve because I've seen this before where the problem's been just left to simmer and simmer and simmer and the next thing, be it the one or the other, usually the one that has the resolve on their side and has been unable to bring it to a satisfactory result um, will just lose out because the other person breaks. The other person, the worry and the oppression, the weigh weighing down on that person, as this scripture says, just wears them out. They can't, they just can't facilitate the unresolve anymore. And the sad part about this is the the other person, the one um, with the problem, and I've seen this, on. It, it's so sad. They've got family members that are opposing the relationship. Um, they're pushing the other person away. They won't accept the other person for whatever reason. Um, and usually it's not legitimate. Usually it's some kind of selfish um, uh, agenda. They try and get allegiance with other people and other things, and um, they'll go to the family events, and you'll be left out if you're the one on the end of it. And oh, it just gets really ugly. And sometimes you can try and weigh it out. Sometimes you can try and ride it out, but. It's very difficult, unless you've had lots of experience with this kind of thing, to know when it's time to pull the pin. And sometimes these people can do all sorts of crazy stuff under the pressure of not being able to fix the problem. Um, these people, due to the lack of um, capability to resolve, they can go into resentment and start fishing around for people that haven't got the issue at hand. Um, they'll start reaching out to people to try and justify the issue not being resolved. And what they'll start to do is slowly but surely move into the relationship to move out of it. Now listen to this because this is really, really diabolical the way this works. They'll move in closer to you to justify them moving away from you because it's all gotten too much. Um, there's a lot of aspects here. People that are enmeshed, um, domestically enmeshed, are usually going to um, struggle with resolve if it's coming from within their tribe. Um, what they'll do is they'll go into an element of betrayal towards the tribe in the sense of they'll still reach out and see that partner, which they believe then is a sign of faithfulness to that person which it is to a degree. But if the festering has caused a separation of the partner um, in terms of the person that they're with that's got the person that's coming out of the tribe to see their loved one and then going back to the tribe, they're not going to be able to sustain it. And I've seen this before where one thing's led to another. In the last case, the lady that I was with invited me to a family function um, and then some other family members decided that they wanted to go that didn't agree with me and to be quite frank by the end of it I didn't agree with them I, I just thought their their attitudes were absolutely lousy um, and this woman was caught in the middle of it uh, I facilitated it in a way I said will you come to my crib I won't go to yours, um, but I was aiming and she knew for some kind of a resolve to take place. It was never going to happen. Um, there was too many interests as to her support of those family members. Um, and consequently, the oppression when um, I couldn't go to this family thing, which I understood the dynamics behind it. It was more important for the family members themselves to go. And I was happy to set, step aside to that. But it had all come to a point where nothing was being resolved. It had all come to a point where the people with the problem were indirectly running the relationship. And to some degree, I believe that the 
woman had something to do with this in the sense of she just wouldn't stand up. And the worry, right, the worry of it all weighs down on you and that weight becomes oppressive. It's called an oppression. A lot of people confuse depression with oppression, the weight. And what you'll find is these people begin, they turn to medications, they'll turn to recreational drugs, some will turn to alcohol, some will mix a lot. And you start to see this person fall apart. And the first sign of that happening is they'll draw in closer, right, to you, but they'll be falling apart while they're doing it. And if you can't see this, you're going to get really harmed and maimed because they're going to crash, they're going to do something stupid um, in, because they're not fixing the problem, the weight of it on their psyche is causing them to malfunction. The thorns are stripping the roses off that person's character. And it's the saddest thing I've, I've ever seen happen. And this is what ruins so many relationships because the person will go back to the stem, to their default, to the roots, of the tree where the roses and the thorns come from and that'll have nothing to do with you nothing to do with your performance but it won't be in your favor because they'll default back to where they're comfortable and all you can do is protect yourself and watch it's quite it's really sad because the trust person's trying to be faithful they're unable to really be that there's something in their innate character that's not going to allow them to fully commit um, and they basically sabotage um, the relationship. And all you can do as a man or a woman is, number one, recognize it, that something's just not right, even though they're pulling closer. They're pulling closer than what they normally would, which is sign number one. Sign number two is that closeness is actually showing you that something externally outside your presence inside that person's life is pulling them away um, it can be another person or it can just be the weight of the whole problem and they're drifting away um, you'll see them manifest uh, more of their habits um, they'll become more uh, engaged with their recreational drugs or medications and things and this has nothing to do with you you're just watching all this. It's it's theatre. It's like it's just relationship theatre that you don't want to be. In. It's like going to a horror movie in a way because all you can do is pay you for the ticket and then sit there, sit there and watch the movie, and all of a sudden it's three D and you're in it. Um, and you, what I've learned is you've got to get out quick because otherwise you'll come to the a boiling point where I had the thorns all over me and I was in the end I just I did get angry and and I just said you need to get your stuff and go like and you don't want to end up there you don't want the weight of all this to turn you into a person that doesn't reflect you and that's see when I get ang when I get to the point where I've been driven to anger that tells me that it's time to end the relationship that it's just not fruitful it's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for you. You can blame whoever you like for the breakdown. It's really not going to make any difference. The things breaks down. What you'll find is they're probably blaming you um, as much as what you're asking them to fix things. Um, they've forgotten about the weight. This is the thing, see. While you can be agreeing with all their arrangements and yeah, I believe this needs to and yeah, and I, I can see they've got no comprehension of the burden on you. They've got no comprehension that the oppression coming from this unresolved, this, what would you call, toxic toxicity being aimed at you is just bearing down on you, bearing down on you. And you're asking them and they just won't. And the thorns betray the roses. This person wants to be loved, but they are unable to navigate themselves in a way in which the thorns weren't going to win. And this might be happening to you. This might be happening to you right now. And um, you're watching your relationship fall down around you, and you're watching this person trying to keep things together, and you're 
watching this person realizing that it's all falling apart and they do love you and they and you do love and care for each other but all this stuff with the thorns in it, it's just stripping you to bits and then all of a sudden somebody blows up or somebody comes limping in they've had an affair or somebody's you know something stupid's happened and what was and could have been a perfectly normal relationship is disintegrated so if you look at this scripture again worry weighs a person down and it does when things aren't resolved and you know it's a major concern it's going to weigh the person down it's going to weigh you down it's going to weigh the relationship down they're not going to care because they've got an agenda they want to make sure that the person that they're trying to control is where they want them and you want to be on this side of it an encouraging word cheers a person up so maybe if you have gone through a breakup you might be able to write a letter explaining what happened or what whatever the case might be um, but leave things as they are the fawns they win most of the time 80 percent now 75 to 80 percent of relationships die get ruined one way or another um, not that i'm going to yield to those statistics but it's true and it's not something that you want to be on the end of because people you know love's important to people and you want it to work um, but we need to be aware that these things happen and they happen usually in an unfair way usually there's another outside party that want to contribute to the demise of the relationship and it might not necessarily be your fault so this is reverend dr jason w morrison on the pro brick exclusive youtube channel thank you for joining me if you have any questions put them in the comments like comment and share subscribe and i do hope this video has helped you from a biblical probably and real life um, dimension that's what the scriptures are for in most cases to help things to be resolved and thank you for joining me and bye for now